Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today me and Dan Hughes um, are going to be talking about uh, games that you can get for your kids. Now kids of course could be all ages and stuff, but these are 12 games that we hope will help you as you're going around this busy season. Great board games that are fun for kids to play and also entertaining for parents to play with their children. So let's get started. We're going to start with Dan and let him start off with the first game. Here we go. Thanks Tom. Now, for people who don't know me, my name's Dan and I've got a segment over on Board Game Breakfast that I do with my little daughter Cora, who's five, and I play an awful lot of kids' games. And here are some of my favourites that I think would make really good Christmas presents. The first one is Lumina. Now this is a game for two to four players, it's a competitive game, so you're playing against each other, there's going to be a winner at the end of it. And it says on the box that it's for five and up, but I'd argue you could probably go as low as four, depending on the child, to be honest. And this is a memory game, um, but it's not like a normal memory game where you're just flipping over tiles and seeing if you can match pairs and things like that. In this one, you're travelling around a map, a beautiful, gorgeous map, um, and trying to find as many lightning bugs as you can. And memory games are great for kids, um, especially young kids, because young kids tend to have really good memories and adults tend to have really, really poor memories. So it's a game that can legitimately compete on a, an even playing field uh, against their parents or their aunties or uncles or... or, or grown-up friends or whoever really. So, so Lumina is a fantastic game by Haber, who's a, a really well-respected children's game publisher, um, and I, I highly recommend this one. Great for kids who like adventure, great for kids with good memories, and as I say, some fantastic production values going into this one. Okay, the first game I have here is Blurble, Get the Word Out. Now in Blurble, you, what you're going to be doing in this game is flipping a card over and that card is going to be showing a picture of something, maybe a piano or whatever, and then you have to think of another word that starts with the same letter. So if I flip over piano, I'll say pink some object or something that starts with that same letter and you're going at you're doing each person that's at the table so you're going at each person and whoever wins the duel is going to get the card and at the end of the game whoever has the most cards is the winner it's simple it's silly it's funny you're sitting there laughing because you're you know your mind will just go blank as you're going back and forth with everyone everyone should win some of the duels some of the time so it kind of works really well there's a large diversity of pictures and you're just going to end up blur 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 blurring at some point which which is why the game is called Blurble, Get the Word Out. Now my next game is a bit of a, an unusual thing really, it's a, it's a trivia game, it's a trivia game for children, um, which are relatively rare and, and, and few and far between really, and especially ones that young children can compete in as well. Now this on the box, it says this one is for children of six and up, but you could certainly get away with playing that with, with younger children, and it's called Quizoo, sorry Quizoo, and in this game you're going to get a card a little bit like that, and you're going to be trying to identify which is perhaps the heaviest or the longest lived or the shortest or the lightest or the, um, I can't remember the other categories basically, but there's a number of different categories and you've got to kind of work out where that a particular animal comes in that. So in this example, we're looking for the heaviest animal. So the, which is the heaviest out there? A, a gorilla, a crocodile, a great white shark or a bear? And you look on the um, chart, you follow it along, and you can find out which one is the heaviest and which one's the right answer. Now this is a great game because you don't need to be able to read to play it. You have to follow the diagram, but once that diagram's been explained a few times, most children can kind of get their head around it and be able to tell you if you've got the right or wrong answer. And then you can always check to make sure they're not cheating you. Um, but yeah, a really good game, nice and cheap, nice stocking filler, uh, Quizoo. Now we go to Dr. Eureka. Dr. Eureka is a great game because it mixes logic with dexterity. In Dr. Eureka, you each have three beakers and some colored balls, and you are pouring the balls from one beaker into the other beaker without letting them fall on the table, figuring out the best way to get the combination on the card that you have in front of everybody. This is an entertaining game because as you're trying to pour things as fast as you can, that's the dexterity part, you're also trying to be the most efficient. If I need a blue, purple, orange ball here and I have two of each color, how do I get to that spot? And then when you're, end, when you're finished with a round, you leave the balls in the tubes that they're at, which sometimes can give an advantage to the person who's in last place maybe, because while their balls might not be anywhere near that last card, the new card flipped over, they might be a lot closer to it. It's great, it works really well for families across the board. Highly recommend it. That's Dr. Eureka. Now then, this one's an oldie, but a real favorite of ours. It's a Sleeping Queens, over 10 years old now. Um, 
And this is a card game. Again, another nice, light, cheap game, because cheap's always good with Christmas presents, I, I know. It's a card game where you're going to be trying to wake up, um, well, wake up sleeping queens, basically. It's got some great take that elements to it, but it's also got some really great math elements to it as well. The way you wake up these sleeping queens is by collecting cards and playing cards. And one of the ways you can play the cards is by making a kind of addition equation. So for example, here, you can play these three cards together because five plus two equals seven. So, uh, so you can play those cards and that means you would be able to wake up a queen. Really a lot of fun. This plays really well with two, it plays well with three, it plays well with four. The ages are eight and up, I think it is. Um, but, but certainly you can play younger than that. Uh, I, I've played with my seven-year-old son uh, back when he was seven. And to be honest, I'm probably going to introduce this to my five-year-old daughter soon. So Sleeping Queens, as I say, a bit old now, but it's a really good one. Really recommend it. Ticket to Ride is a very, very popular game. And this is the kids' games version of it. Ticket to Ride First Journey. Now in this game you're going to be playing cards uh, where you're going to be connecting cities across the map of America or if you bought the newer version there's a European version too and you're doing so by playing cards that allow you to place trains between these cities and so you're just trying to figure out the best route that you can. It has a really cool look to it. It actually teaches a little bit about geography as players are placing these trains on the board. Great artwork, some forward planning. What is the best way to get from Los Angeles to Miami? What's the best way to get from New York to Boston? And so as you're playing these different trains out there, uh, collecting cards, collecting, 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 and then playing the cards, Good decision making, but not overly difficult e either. I think Ticket to Ride, like I said, is a fantastic game to introduce to almost anyone. This one is a great one to teach to the kids. Ticket to Ride, first journey. Now then, something a little bit bigger than that, Sleeping Queens now. This is called Outfoxed. Now this is a cooperative game, which means that everyone works together for a common goal. There's no winners or losers. Oh, there are, but everyone either wins or everyone loses. And that's really good, especially for kids um, who struggle with losing a little bit, who, who are bad losers or, or bad winners. Um, it, kind of develop, it means that you can play games with them without having tantrums and things like that. So in this game, you are a detective chicken and you are trying to find out who stole the pie, which fox stole the pie. So you're gonna have a load of different suspects around the board and a load of clues on the board, and you're gonna be deducing by a process of elimination um, which fox took the pie. So did the fox have a monocle? Did it have a scarf? Did it have an umbrella? Um, if not, well, it must be George or, or whoever, whoever the fox is. I can't remember the name of the foxes off the top of my head, um, but there might be a George in there. So out foxed, great little cooperative game. Again, gorgeous bits, gorgeous components, gorgeous art. Really whimsical, been a hit with every child I've ever played it with. Um, really recommend this one. Great game. Here we have another game that's based on, an, on a game for adults, Stone Age. This one is my first Stone Age. This game is a little bit of memory, but as there's a bunch of tiles around the outside of the board and you're going to be flipping over a tile which will show you what action you can do next. You move around the board collecting resources, trying to get the right resources to fulfill orders, to build huts. This gives kids some forward thinking planning but also gives them that memory aspect. Memory is a fun thing for kids to do. Memory match, remembering where things are, but this takes it and adds another level to it where not only are you doing memory but you're also trying to find the right resources to get the right cards finished. Works really well, the beautiful components, just fantastic game. That's my first Stone Age. Now then, this isn't really a game to be honest, it's more of an activity, but I'm, I'm squeezing it in here anyway because I, I feel so passionate about it. It's uh, Rory Story Cubes. Again, these have been around for a while. They, you kids probably have got a set of these at their school, if I'm honest. Um, these, there's nothing to them other than just dice. They're just little, little simple dice. And you roll the dice, and then, either collaboratively or taking it in turns, or however you want to play it really, you make up stories about what the pictures are on the dice. And this is a fantastic little game, and great for interacting with your kids and making up stories together, which, which they, will, they will adore. They will adore making up stories with, it, with their parents, or again, grandparents, or whoever. Um, and having that, that collaborative experience, it, it, it really is a, a, a pleasure to see. And there's lots of different sets as well. There's this, this basic set, and I've also got these two. That were, this one's all about voyages, and this one's um, actions and things like that. But you can get all sorts. There's Batman ones, there's Moomin ones, there's Scooby-Doo ones, uh, Princess ones, I think. Um, all sorts of different things. Looney Tunes um, ones. 
So, so you can whatever your child is into, you can probably find a, a set of Rory's Story Cubes to play with them, um, and they they are great. This one, I'm hesitant to even say it's a children's game because it works so well with families too, and that's Ice Cool. Ice Cool is a flicking game. You have little penguins that have weighted bottoms on them, and in this game, you're going to be flicking those penguins. Each round of the game, three of the penguins are basically running out of their classroom and trying to go around school collecting fish. The other player is playing the hall monitor, who's going around and telling them to get back in. So the hall monitor is trying to hit the other penguins. The other penguins are just trying to go through doors, and because of the way these penguins are weighted, you can do special trick shots, they can jump over walls, they can go around corners, there's a lot going on. And so like I said, I played this game with no kids in sight, just adults playing it, silly fun. But kids also enjoy it. it. It's amazing because the box itself opens up like a Russian nesting doll to build a pretty big area on the table, and then you just take these penguins and just start flicking them. Hilarious fun, a great game for all ages that's ice cool. And last of all, uh, I'd say the biggest one to last, that's uh, this one, oh, Crazy Coconuts. Um, now, this has got a fantastic toy, toy factor to it. Basically, in this game, you're gonna be a monkey throwing coconuts into um, some cups. And every time you get a coconut into a cup, you get that cup and put it on your side. The first person to five cups they've collected wins. Um, and what makes this even better is that you can steal other people's cups. So you can, you can flick your coconut into somebody else's cup, which is, which is ace. Um, so Crazy Coconut's got a fantastic toy value. Not probably for very young kids. It says five plus here. Uh, I'd probably say that's about right. It, it can be quite tricky to judge how far you're going to flick the coconut. Um, but younger kids can play with it. Obviously, it's got very small bits. These coconuts are, are quite small, so you don't want to give it to a two young children because it's going to be a, a choking hazard. But a really, really, really fun game. Um, and one that's great for, for grown-ups as well. So you can, once the kids have gone to bed on Christmas Day, you can crack this out again and, and compete uh, more ruthlessly this time. Uh, yeah, so Crazy Coconuts, fantastic game, another game with fantastic bits and a lot of fun. And finally, we get to Beasts of Balance. Beasts of Balance is a big game. It's a dexterity game that syncs up with your Android or iPhone device or iPad. And in this game, it is half dexterity game. So you're taking these weird, unusual blocks and stacking them. But before you stack them, you will scan them on the device that comes with this game, which will sync up to your electronic device. And you will see these animals as they will migrate from one area to another or as they will, uh, you will breed them with another kind of animal, forming really weird, interesting, unique animals. It's silly, entertaining, fun, that aspect, but the dexterity part is very hard. So it's not so necessarily a game that you're playing with other players. One person can play it at a time, and you're just trying to see how high of a score you can get, or perhaps you're trying to find other animals that you haven't found yet. So it's like half computer game, half dexterity game, but a really neat, cool use of technology. Folks, those are the games for our 12 games I think that you should get for kids. All fantastic. I want to thank Dan for coming on board and doing this with me. If you want to see more of him, he's on my board game breakfast show each and every Monday morning. Until next time, I'm Tom Vass. You've been watching the 12 Games of Christmas Kids Edition. Check out the rest of our list for other games you should get at Christmas time. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. And by the way, Merry Christmas. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.